So like a lot of people, I've um, upgraded the gimbal uh, that I have to the H3 3D gimbal. And as you can see, um, you know, one of the things I've heard a lot in the forums is that the gimbal tends to hang a bit lower and, um, you know, can cause some damage or problems uh, when you're landing on uneven ground. So what I've done is purchased a longer landing gear and this is just a, a wee demonstration of, um, you know, the difference that that makes um, with the longer landing gear fitted and, and how it's going to affect and, and the, the look and the characteristics of the Phantom 2. So uh, this is a, obviously a, a pre uh, a pre construction um, clip and then I'll uh, show you uh, part way through and a completed look just to give you an idea of, of how it actually all pans out. So here's the compass module which is um, attached to the leg. Uh, got to be very careful with this that uh, it doesn't get damaged and that it is uh, repositioned in uh, very much the same position uh, on the on the new leg. Um, of course this also has the um, expansion port here. Um, the IOSD is attached to the leg on my model um, and it's got the antennas uh, running down on the insides of the legs. Um, my one, you know, this is looking a little bit second hand at the moment, but it's that's my data link and the immersion transmitter. Um, so I'm, essentially I'm just going to remove all of this uh, and have a, a, a clean kind of uh, platform and uh, redo it all to uh, to get it looking good and, and functioning really well. Here are the uh, power cable and video cable for the immersion transmitter. It's unlikely that those plugs are going to fit through that hole so I'll probably have to disconnect and desolder those, resolder them back again. Um, this is what it's looking like so far with a bit of the stuff removed. It's quite a lot cleaner, uh, so we're part way there. So here's the Phantom with the legs removed and all the uh, appropriate wiring, picking, uh, poking its heads out through those holes. Um, so next stage is to start feeding all that back through the new legs and um, reattaching everything. Uh, obviously being very mindful of um, removing... Uh, these uh, components off the existing legs. We've got the the uh, compass here, compass module. So just a matter of getting all of that um, correctly fitted onto the new legs. What I've done here is um, just put a wee bit of tape on the new leg in approximately the same position of where the um, compass fits. Now this is just so that you can be assured that the cables coming down from the body of the Phantom are still going to plug in. I have seen cases where people have tried putting the compass module right down the end of the leg and they've discovered, you know, that it just doesn't fit. So just a wee bit of tape or something there. Just a wee tip. So halfway there, I've um, got uh, that, on, that side on with the uh, compass uh, unit attached. I've got some tape, uh, tape that leg back. Uh, and on this side there's uh, quite a lot more wiring coming through so it's got to be threaded through quite carefully make sure that you don't short any wires or anything out and uh, just a couple on that side to finish it off uh, so carry on it's uh, on and attached now so just plugging everything back in and um, you have to do just a spot of soldering there um, and get the um, expansion port uh, attached up there so looking really good. That's the final uh, finished product and as you can see it's significantly higher off the ground for the um, gimbal clearance probably adds another four or five centimeters and it's a lot wider in its stance. Um, I've got everything else connected up in the transmitter and everything back on it but it is uh, probably quite top heavy and you may notice it tumbles forward or backward if you're still moving when you land. Um, it's something to be aware of and be a bit careful of other than that, I think it's a significant improvement.